There are so many types of love and we need all of them. And platonic love is just as important as your romantic love. So today I wanna talk about the importance of having friends. Hello and welcome to Ladies Listen Up. I am your host, Gwendolyn G.R. Houston Jack. Friends, I immediately think of Houdini, so I know my, my age is short when I say that, but we need friends. You need friends just as much as you need your romantic love, right? It just can't be the one. We need all of them to really balance us out. And when you think about your friends, your really good friends, like your best friend, when things don't go well, that heartbreak, oh my goodness, it's crazy. So of course, I have to have a guest to help me talk about the importance of platonic love. Let's go ahead and get her in. Ah, welcome, Josie Pickens. Welcome. How are you, ma'am? I am wonderful and excited to be here to have this conversation with you. <laughs> now, I just I, I have to reintroduce you because people may not have met you the first time you were here on the show. So let me tell you real quick about Josie, right? She is a writer, a speaker, an organizer, and an educator. And her work focuses on conversations around race, gender, sexuality, and pleasure. I always say she's like a pleasure activist. This is <laughs> Josie Pickens, who also happens to be the better version of Gwendolyn. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of my very best friends. <laughs> I don't know about that. Listen, I'm over here like, whoo, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> you know, pressure. A great version. Day. A great version, you know? <laughs> Well, um, it's, it's that yin and yang, right? It's the yin and yang. So um, today's conversation is going to be pretty free flowing, but we're going to use our friendship. I forgot. Ooh, girl, it's years, right? Like 30? 30? Our 30 year reunion is coming up. So it's been more than 30 years. Our 30 oh, year reunion is so coming like up in 2024. Four? Oh, Next God. year. It'll be 30 years since we graduated from high school. Right, right. So, and we were friends all throughout high school. So we're kind of embarking on about 35 years of friendship. Uh, well, since we are doing the math, and clearly uh, the math is still math. So just, you know, uh, hey, let me, uh, let, let, let's, get into, let's get into why all we need is love. Right, Joe. So since you are the pleasure activist, yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going to let you just give us a brief explanation or definition of platonic love. And um, why is it important to our emotional health? Mm, first of all, I guess I should begin by saying that uh, we should be working towards experiencing all kinds of love and recognizing those relationships as valuable, right? So whether we're talking about familial love, platonic love, romantic love, all of these loves could, should kind of usher us into this kind of communal love, mm -hmm. which Bell Hooks says is like the ultimate love that we should be trying to experience. Every love that we experience should be feeding into this kind of collective community love um, mm -hmm. that we have and that we share. Um, when I think about platonic love, I am thinking about, you know, our friendships. This is the kinds of relationships that a lot of times are our longest lasting relationships, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I am a three year cycle girl in romantic relationships about after about three years, I'm like, Oh, moving on from that. Three years is the top. Um, sadly, I'm working on that. I'm <laughs> going through a great therapeutic process around that unpacking that. But ha anyway, as I said, you and I have been friends for almost 35 years now. So 
actually yeah. my longest lasting relationships are my platonic and familial relationships, right? Yeah. And the relationships that I have in community. So that is something that we should think about when we're thinking about platonic love. And we should be thinking about how to value platonic love mm-hmm. in a in the same ways that society teaches us to value uh, romantic love. I remember when I started thinking about and writing about platonic relationships and relationships with our girlfriends, mm-hmm. that I was amazed at how little information was available. Like mm-hmm. there really aren't any books. There, mm-hmm. in, there aren't any public conversations around like, well, how do you repair friendships? Like, oh, when things fall apart in our platonic relationships, how do we repair that? There are millions of books, literally, on how to repair our romantic relationships. Tons. And those books are geared towards women because it's women who are responsible for maintaining the health quote unquote, <laughs> romantic relationships, right? But like there are no, literally there are no conversations happening around, well, how do we keep the fire going yeah. in our platonic relationships? Yeah. We also are taught that we put those platonic relationships on the back burner when we do end up in romantic relationships. I was right? going to say that. There's yeah. an expectation that you just ditch your friends. Yes. Yeah, and I was, um, is it... Now, obviously, we're speaking from a woman's perspective, right? But you do see it often. And there's movies about it. There's TV shows about it. Where the moment a woman gets her mate, Uh she just dumps everything. Everything is centered on that person and that person alone. Mm -hmm. And it becomes her identity. And Mm -hmm. she completely loses who she is. And I I hate to say it like that, but it. That's that's the narrative that's currently out there. But even if even in society, they make it sound as if if you don't have a partner mm-hmm. and all you have is your friends, you're mm-hmm. lacking. And that's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're a cat those, lady. Those you're a lie. Sure. You know, one of the greatest things that I think that I did in my life um, as someone who has been a serial monogamist is recognizing that the relationships that often sustain me are my platonic relationships Mm -hmm. and learning Mm -hmm. how to be invested in those relationships. And also learning that um, those relationships can also be amorous, right? So, you know, I am a Black woman who is um, um, sexually fluid, I guess I would say. And so I date all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. What I've found though, is that a lot of people think that my platonic friends, whether male, female, or, you know, somewhere in between, like, are you dating such and such? (laughs) Are you dating this person? Are you dating this woman? Are you dating this man? And it it used to be so strange to me. Now I just say yes. (laughs) <laughs> ask if we're dating G I'm going to say yes so please tell the mister you know apologize on my behalf that I'm starting <laughs> having an affair with you but if I get if I get an example like that because my my work husband my work husband Ron mm-hmm. he, he's clearly a gay man in my opinion I mean I don't I don't think there's any way to mistake it right but he's always said well this is is my work wife this is my work wife and then he went to my wife is is coming in from texas to come visit when i left new york right and someone said wait ron's married (laughs) (laughs) you know because you know we will be arm in arm we'll hold hands like you know it's we look like a couple but it's like no it may not be necessarily quote unquote romantic but i show up in relationship with my friends in an amorous way yeah i'm lovey dovey i'm sweet and syrupy like i love my friends i look at them like my eyes get all heart eye emojied when i see them i celebrate them i call Mm -hmm. them my love Mm -hmm. i tell them that i love them and so for mm-hmm. a lot of people, they imagine that that can only exist in romantic relationships. Yeah. So when yeah. they see me have those kinds of relationships with, with people, they just automatically assume, oh, it's romantic. Yeah. You know? And it's like, yeah. no. Like, 
Yes. I lo- I've had, listen, I've had to have, you know, not necessarily some conversations with partners of my friends, but mm-hmm. like that, Hey, I'm harmless. I love your person, but <laughs> in a platonic way, even though it may look like something else, you know? Well, you know, society has a hard time being an adult when it comes right. to what is, what's platonic right. and what is. Like if someone just says, hey, how are you? They're like, are you through with me? I'm just being a good human. Calm down. Right. Like, just right. calm down. We really go to, no, not, I think you're flirt with me. Okay, so I'm a Virgo. People are put in boxes, right? Right. I got got a lot of boxes and I'm very straightforward. You always know where you stand. So the idea of, I just could have sworn you were flirting. No, not even. I don't know where you got that idea from. Like not even, not not even. It is not not flirting, actually. (laughs) But I want to return to something really quick because- um, we do have a lot of years on us, <laughs> the, yeah, I come out. <laughs> but there was a point like any, like any relationship mm-hmm. where we grew apart. Yeah. Right. It was like right after high school. Right. We, we grew apart. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time I came back to Houston and I don't, I'm trying to think there was a, a club or something down close to Chinatown. And I ran into you. It was was like myself and my sister and you were there. And I tell you, I was like, my heart was like, oh my God, it's Joe. (laughs) And and I wasn't sure like we we were on talking terms or not because it had been so many years that had passed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but it felt so good to see you Mm -hmm. and to be like, oh my God, here's my friend Joe. Yeah. You know what I mean? I remember but, but, that. I remember but, us, you know, we've had, listen, it's been 35 years. So we've had a couple of little, little falling outs, little moments of not speaking. And I think that that is normal in any relationship as we grow and we um, evolve into different people. And sometimes yeah. we are changing in ways that yeah. we need to like find common ground again with the people mm-hmm. that we love, even our friends. Mm-hmm. And I think the disservice that we have is that we, Again, nobody teaches us how to communicate that. Like we are very much like, oh, you know, well, you know, I've changed. I'm not the person I used to be. And my old friends, you know, I just let them go. (laughs) Right. But, but we are not encouraged to do that in marriage. No, you grow, you grow as a couple in your marriage. You have to grow. You have to do the work. You have to learn how to communicate. You have to learn how to find common ground. And I think that moments when we have been disconnected, it is because we maybe had not reached a point, I know I hadn't, where we understood that like, oh, this this person that I love and care for is changing and transitioning into someone new. Mm-hmm. And like, I want to be a part of that. So yeah. what does that look like? How do I communicate that? Like, how do I stay connected to someone who is evolving into another person. Like, what does that look like? We don't know how to have those conversations with friends. No, no. And you, you we have don't know to grow together. We really don't. We no, we we don't, because it, it's just it's there's there are so many unspoken things. And and the growth part is the biggest one because you can outgrow your partner. Mm-hmm. You can definitely outgrow a relationship. Like when, when you realize, and, and I have let go of some friendships, I've let them go because mm-hmm. that relationship was not serving me. It just right. wasn't. Yeah. And when you, when you think about all that you put in and not that it's about receiving, but it needs to be something close to 50, 50. Right. Yeah. You know? Reciprocal relationships. Yeah. That's the thing. It's not yeah. about evolving or changing. See, see, it is the about- word I was looking for, but I just didn't have it. Yeah, it's about like intentionality. Like, yes, I'm changing, I'm evolving, this person is changing and evolving, but my intention mm-hmm. is to stay connected and on a road somewhere mm-hmm. together with this person. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. am alignment. Sometimes that doesn't work out. I have yeah. friendships that I've had to cut loose because I didn't feel like they were reciprocal friendships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where I felt like I was receiving as much as I was giving. Um, so yes, that has happened. But, you know, one of the things that I think has saved us over the years is that like we want to be in relationship with each other. Yeah. And there is an well, intention. You're kind of 
You're kind of cool. You know, kind of intelligent. I almost said so I can get away. <laughs> <laughs> no curse words. I've been telling myself that. I'm like, well, no. okay. So, so it, it, was, we were it was interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> was interesting. Like some of the things that brought us together was, was that we are, um, I say fairly, we, we are highly intelligent women, like hands down. Trust that. Trust yeah. we, those chicks in school, but like we had the same address. Our fathers both came from Louisiana. They had the same yeah. first name. We had all yeah, these we together. from each other. You know. We had all these. And I was telling you just the other day um, that, you know, when we talk about those, those different universes and how mm-hmm. you are that better version, I told you, I wanted to be a writer. I was like, I'm going to write for a magazine. And then I got in there and I thought, not happening. <laughs> Yet you, you follow that path. And I collected your articles. Very brown sugar-ish, okay? <laughs> Very brown we sugar. We both signed out the star writers in our high school. <laughs> like you have that photograph. There's a photograph where like on the uh, right. marquee in oh, front the marquee. of the school, mm-hmm. we have won some type of like writing award and some NYL. Yeah. NY yeah. competition. Mm-hmm. And both of our names were there. So mm-hmm. yeah. We were doing some stuff and I was like, oh. And then I thought, well, I'm going to be a professor because I love teaching and I forgot that I am a slacker. Like I, I understand, but I am still that kid. <laughs> Who yeah. will do stuff sometimes that before and you know and knock it out the park. I was like, I don't even feel like going to class. They're like, but you're yeah. the teacher. I was like, is it gonna snow today? I <laughs> thought it was snow today. <laughs> right. I could have sworn. But yet you have done that work. I thought, see Joe, see Joe is doing the because this slacker is I, I like, too no. am a slacker. <laughs> but um <laughs> maybe I, you know, I had a you know, I was able to, you, you were able to see some other paths and go in other directions. That's, I yeah. think that's all it is. But we, we both- did adult education. So, so we did leave that and went to adult education. Instead of writing for a magazine, we wrote for a company. So we were still writing, but it was just, that's it. so, but, but yeah, but you know, it was still in there, but I stop and think about the, um, the maintenance of it and, and the growth that we have had we have had our hard conversations. Yeah. And I always talk about like communication should be caring and compassionate mm-hmm. and consistent and gracious. Like yeah. it, it should have all these things. There is a way to be honest with your loved ones, your family, your friends, yeah. and still be gracious about it. That's it. You don't have to like try it's to help you love you. them. Right. Right. And we, we've had to have a couple, right? And I thought, are we going to make it? We're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like this thing that you said or did hurt me, you know? And the <laughs> acknowledgement of that. And on both sides, both you know? Sides. And the acknowledgement <laughs> of that. And like, yeah. oh, I wasn't trying to hurt you. Right. Oh, how right. we fix it? But you recognizing know? that, recognizing it and... Most importantly, wanting to do the work to fix it, That's to repair it. it, to be a better partner in this relationship. Because it is yeah. a partnership, like you said. Partnership. <laughs> partnership. That's mm-hmm. it. That's it. We have to learn how to communicate and communicate effectively. And as you said, communicate with love. Yeah. Um, and there there are no, it's like I I... You know, when people are like, oh, hard truths, like, you know, you have to confront people with hard truths. I'm like, the truth doesn't have to be hard. No. The no. truth can be soft and gentle. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You know, but I'm somebody with a mouth. Like, I can deliver a hard truth. Whoa. Like, for the people that I love, why would I Why would I do that? Yeah. Like I don't why? need tough love people Mm-mm. that I love. Yeah. No, the world is tough. Uh, by itself. <laughs> Be gentle with the people that I love yeah. and learning how to communicate in those ways and and ways that, that mean I value this relationship mm-hmm. and I want this relationship to continue. And there are ways to have hard conversations. There are ways to set boundaries. There are ways to do all of that in a way that is fruitful yeah. and moves us closer to relationship. 
-hmm. You know, it's like when you're in couples therapy and the therapist is like, do you want to be right or do you want to be in love? (laughs) You know, you you put that same attitude into your platonic relationship. There literally is nothing that we are taught about romantic relationships and how to maintain them that mm-hmm. we should not be applying to our platonic relationships. Yeah. Well, that's a great segue because my husband, um, I learned later that he he talked to you before he even like <laughs> posed the question to me. <laughs> and I thought, wait, what? <laughs> Where did this happen? <laughs> but... But as you mentioned, in so in so many stories that we see in society, yeah. when you get your romantic partner, you shun, you just shut out yeah. everything about your friends and, and, and that part of you. And it's still a part of you, but there is a way that your romantic partner can be part of that friendship yeah. and include them in special moments as he did. I was like, wait, 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 wait. you guys <laughs> talked about this? So when, did this when did this go down? Let me tell you, I, nobody was rooting for this couple. Like I was, and this is something that also is something that we have to like maneuver through. I can remember when you became engaged and when you were getting married, I was coming out of an engagement and breaking up from a relationship. And that could have been a very difficult time Mm -hmm. of me supporting my friends. Yeah. Because, you know, there and this is something that happens in platonic relationships, right? Like mm-hmm. you see your friend moving forward and doing some of the things that you've wanted to do in your life yeah. um, and, and receiving the kind of love and care that you want to receive. And there can be moments of like jealousy. Yeah. Um, you know, luckily I was just, you know, if you know G, if you know Gwendolyn at all, you know, she's she's a hard nut to crack. <laughs> so seeing her in love and so bubbly oh and my God. So seeing this like light and shine on her, there is no way that I could say that I love her and not fully support and encourage mm-hmm. that in mm-hmm. any way possible. And so like, but, but that's something that happens. And yeah. I've known people who have had, relationships break up because their friends couldn't be happy for them. Yeah. yeah. You know, that dry hating, that yeah. frenemies shit. So yeah. <laughs> and we see, but you know, here's the deal. We see it in all the things because again, you know, I am the person who am, I will support your win. Your win is my win. You know, yes. it's just not my season yet. Like my time is coming, but my right. friends are doing it and i'm i want to be front row and center you know i've gotten on 45 south a many a time to yeah. be like i'm here Joe. i am here to support you that gum and everybody better speak i better clap come on <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> that is and that is the truth like mm-hmm. i think about when i had my book signing and like i don't know what that day would have been without you and your support yeah. and um your encouragement you know I, I just, it would not have been the same. Yeah. And in those moments where you can have those kinds of like moments of triumph and mm-hmm. you can look out and see somebody who has been there through every moment since you were kids. Yeah. Like it really is a beautiful thing. And it is, you know, something that I, I, I want us to be old ladies, you know, mm-hmm. still doing this mm-hmm. thing. Thing. Yeah. I would not have it any other way. Uh, oh, okay. So let us transition because I don't want to make sure we share some things with people about how they can maintain it all. We can mm-hmm. have it all. <laughs> So I think I, I'm I'm recalling some young women that I've, t- I've spoken to who mm-hmm. have ended friendships because, as you say, people aren't happy for them or it gets kind of wonky and things of that nature. What advice do you have to mm. to keep to keep 
keep the fire burning. Clearly there is some growth involved there. There's some emotional intelligence. There's a lot of stuff in there, but there also has to be a want. A want. Yeah. Sis, you got to invest in your friendships in the way, same way that you invest in relationships with yeah. your romantic folks. Yeah. It's the same. It should be the same kind of investment. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It may look different, mm-hmm. but the intentionality should be the same. Yeah. You know, in the same way that when you're having an argument or you feel distant with your romantic partner, when you yeah. feel that with your platonic partner, with your friends, you should be doing the same work to heal that. You know, hey, if you need to see a therapist around your friendship, right to get one, rough, <laughs> you know, and you feel like it's worth the investment, mm-hmm. do that work. Mm-hmm. Um, and handle your friendships with care. Don't abandon them when you are moving on to other things in your life, when you find uh-huh. a romantic partner. You know, now everybody's gonna have their nothing even matters moments, that honeymoon stage where you everybody you disappear from everyone, family, friends, all of that for a couple yeah. of months. Okay. And then as a friend, you're supposed to be able to sit back and be like, oh, my girl is in love. She got her new boo. Like, Hey girl, I'm just checking in. Everything okay? Be able to encourage that. Encourage that. And allowing space for things to settle. But also recognizing when you come out of that honeymoon stage where it's, you know, my man, my man, my man, you know, for a short time, that you are also, while you're in that stage, checking in with your friends, making time for your friends, and then like re- acclimating yourself to the friendship and yeah. even bringing your partner into the friendship. Like, you know, I love your you head. My mind. You literally your read my mind. I was like, I was just about to say, because as we mentioned at the beginning of this, people get that romantic partner completely lose their identity. Yeah. But no offense. You can't be with your partner, your romantic partner all the time. Like you got to have your own hobbies, your own group of friends. Yeah. I do include my husband. He's, he, he's met, he's met Spencer. He clearly knows you. He, he talks to people that I talk to. Yeah. Like I include him in it. So it's right. like, now we're, we're not Siamese twins, Right. But I'm like, hey, you can come with us because he's been invited. He's been invited. He's like, nah, that's okay. I'm good. But at yeah. least they invite him to come hang out with us. And I think it's also important to, as we're thinking about that, like just, like you said, making sure that our new partners are part of um, our platonic relationships, making sure that we are building bridges around that. And also recognizing that the one of the main reasons that our platonic relationships are important, even as we're moving into romantic relationships, is so that our romantic partners do not feel the pressure of fulfilling every need that we have. Because that's where our platonic relationships come in. I'm currently in a relationship. My partner is like, girl, you can talk. <laughs> and guess who can talk? It's me. So I know that, okay. She's like, yeah. <laughs> I can call Gwendolyn and we can have a three hour conversation. <laughs> or a number of my other friends. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm not relying on my romantic partner fulfill, to fulfill every need that I have. I have rich, fulfilling friendships where yeah. I can go on dates with my friends. Like, right. listen, I want to try this new restaurant. <laughs> I want to see the have this art experience. I want to go to the see the symphony. It might be something that my partner might not be into. Mm-hmm. I want to go to party. Like, and so knowing that I have my platonic relationships to fulfill some of that, it takes the strain off of my romantic relationship. And it also allows me space to continue to like build my platonic relationships. Because we need both. And that's why that conversation around communal love is so important. Like, because we have all of these different types of love, we don't experience this loneliness. And self-love is in there, too. It is in there. It is. I'm thinking to myself, clearly, we'll have to do something something outside of this to continue this conversation. Because just like that, it just kind of 
our time just flies, just flies by. It but Joe, really quickly, how can people find you? Oh, so you can find me on, um, I'm mostly on Instagram, surprisingly. I, I realize that I'm like an aesthetic, like visual girl. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time on IG, but I do share a lot of my writing there with links and so forth. So you can find me on Instagram at, at Joe Nubian. You can also find me on Facebook because I have entered my auntie season. And so I find myself being on Facebook. I can curate it better. And so I am Josie Pickens on Facebook. You can follow me there. I'm not so much on X as I used to be, but I'm also Joe Newby in there. If you want to give me a little follow there and feel free to reach out to me, message me if you want to talk about these topics. Sweet. Thank you again oh, for always you. giving us your time. <laughs> and for all the ladies out there, hug your girlfriends. But I will say this, give yourself the space and grace to grow and learn. Thank you.